Hey Adventures, so today is going to be another book review. This is going to be for Loam Hedge by Brian Jakes. This is an anthropomorphic fantasy, a high fantasy, an epic fantasy, uh, adventure quest. There's just falls into a whole bunch of various tropes and subgenres of fantasy, as most books do, actually. Anyways, Loam Hedge is one of the books in the Redwall series. I knew that I'd read this one in the past, but I, I couldn't really remember much about it anything about it when I went to reread it and so I was excited to reread this one because I couldn't remember what it was about. As I was going though I realized that I remembered a lot more than I thought but it was more that uh, some of the storylines that were in the book I thought belonged in other books and I just didn't know which books they belonged in so it was kind of kind of interesting on that front but it was good to reread it and get some events sorted correctly into their chronological order and where what books they belong to and stuff like that. So before I continue on with the main body of my review though, I'd just quickly like to say if you're liking what you're seeing from An Erudite Adventure, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, comment, and subscribe. So there's a ton about this book that I really enjoyed, I, a lot obviously. <laughs> a lot of great characters and really strong themes in this one. Uh, some themes that Jakes likes to use, uh, and but they're still done well, Very basically what I'm saying there is he uh, likes to reuse these same tropes because he's good at them. He's, he uses them for for a good reason because he is good at them and so it's it's good to see I don't I don't have any issue with him reusing themes things like how you don't have to let your looks define you your character is always more important and even the your character being the choices that you make are always more important than what you look like and even even young characters youngsters can see that in you and can know that you're making the right decision and stuff like that will is also a major theme this being like willpower and just how powerful will can be it's it's a it's a, another theme that we don't some some people don't like to use this theme and some people really like to use it and jakes likes to use it and he does it really good and in this book he does it really good i think in my opinion and then the final one that i just want to mention because i don't often see it in fantasy and again, I think that it's done really well, and that is that failure is okay, just don't give up. And there are some books that I could name that use this trope, um, Lord of the Rings being a major one. But I'm not going to just go down that rabbit hole and start talking about all those books. But anyways, I think that Brian Jakes does it really well in this instance. I also noticed a ton of continuity with this book to several other books in the series. That's always cool for me to see. Um, I've made it a point to not go onto uh, the internet and try and find the correct order that these books are laid out in or the chronological order or anything like that. I'm trying to piece that all together for myself because I find that fun and I enjoy doing it. And so uh, seeing the correct chrono chronology and how, how much continuity there is between books, that's always just really fun for me to see. This one does take place later in the series. I can say that for certainty because it references books or it references events from like uh, Madame Mayo, which is the sequel to Redwall, the direct sequel to Redwall, and Redwall sits pretty much dead center in the middle of the timeline from what I can understand of the series. So it is it is cool for me to be able to see those continuity connections and and make them for myself, make those connections for myself, even if they aren't specifically uh, super obvious or they are obvious but they're there's some little some of them are more obvious than others I'll put it that way we also see something that not many authors have the will and ability to write and that is a failed quest I mentioned this already previously in one of the themes that I talked about but I, I do like seeing that quest trope or specifically a failed quest trope um, and it's it's so cool to me who not only loves the quest trope but also as a story to see how things can be taken and taken and twisted in order to tell the right story the right story for that book being is what I mean it, sometimes the right story means you succeed in the quest sometimes it doesn't and when an author is willing to say that it doesn't I like that so much more. I'll mention this one last thing and then finish up the review though, but the, the old grizzled veteran, grizzled old veteran trope, whatever you want to call it, is once again displayed here. And as I keep saying about this book, it's done really well. Bragoon and Sarabando are just fantastic examples of older characters past their prime. And it's just really nice to see that type of storyline because we don't see it very often. Uh, we do occasionally. I just, uh, I believe this is this video will go directly after my heliotrope review and heliotrope does the same thing where it's a old grizzled warrior who has to come back he's past his prime but he has to come back and uh, help help in the quest whatever it might be this is the same type of thing um, so I've seen it several times recently or at least recently during the time that I was reading these books which was four months ago something like that five months ago maybe and so it, but it's it's just a it's a trope that I like when it's done well and 
and I feel like it's done well here as well. So this book definitely has some very well executed parts and I did like it quite a bit. It's not in my top five for the Redwall series, I don't think, but it's a really solid entry for the series in a lot of ways, including the world building. And that's that's something that I'll always love is seeing seeing Jake's go to a different part of the world than, or to a part of the world that we've already seen maybe multiple times even, and showing us something new about that. Uh, how, how can that be new? And I, it's done here well, and I like it. So anyways, that is my review for Loam Hedge by Brian Jakes. Thank you guys for watching in Arid Adventure. We are posting lots of videos at the moment, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys again soon. Stay warm.